Welcome back. We're here today looking at the first of three different Mandriva based Linux distributions that are either still ticking along or have recently had a release. Now, one such release that has, uh, that has recently come out is Magia 7. Now, Magia 7 is a, a community-based distribution. It's uh, been going for quite a while now, and it was originally based off Mandriva back in the day. And, uh, and as, the Man uh, as the Mandriva project drew to a close, uh, a lot of the community decided they wanted to keep it going and forked it and created Magia. So we're into our seventh release, and the Magia team is pretty excited, understandably, as seven is a, it's a great number. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to I'm going to break it down into two very very distinct sections because I feel very polarized about this particular release, and uh, and it's going to be two sections simply pros and cons uh, for this distribution because unlike other distributions that are you know just yet another Ubuntu based distro etc etc this one does have a very unique heritage and this distro leans heavily into that heritage. Okay, so right now I'm looking at the uh, I'm looking at the Plasma desktop. That is one of the desktops that uh, that Magia supports, and uh, and I would say one of the pros is that this desktop um, does support a bucket load of desktop environments, and it claims that it's desktop environment agnostic, meaning that it doesn't give any special time or attention to any particular desktop, which is both a pro and a con. So I will mention it in both sections. First of all, uh, on the pro side of things, it means that each desktop environment is supported and more or less at their latest stable version. So the pro of that is for, for example, um, Plasma is at 5.15 and you've got GNOME, which is at 3.32. You have LXDE, you've got LXQT, you've got XFCE at 4.13. And when 4.14 comes out, they have, uh, the Magia team have stated that they will update it for that. Big difference there is it supports GTK3 instead of, um, or it's based on GTK3 instead of GTK2. So it's a bit of a big deal. Um, and also Cinnamon 4.0 and Mate 1.2. Two. So there's an awful lot of desktop environments that are available for you to go out and install. That's definitely a pro. Now, uh, other pros are that they have updated their installation media from when they first came out. And that's why it's actually, uh, we're up to Magia 7.1 at this stage. And uh, basically it was just so that um, the recently released Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs by AMD would actually be supported. Um, so that's fun. It's based on Linux kernel 5.1, which is pretty up to date. And, uh, and so now they have out of the box support for the Ryzen 3000 um, series of CPUs, which is not something every Linux distro can say at this point. Um, they've also been working really hard on ARM support. I think version five and version seven is, uh, is slowly taking shape, um, starting from work that they did in Magia 6. And something that I really appreciate being somebody who has a uh, laptop that has hybrid graphics, they've spent a bit of time figuring out um, and giving the user different options when it comes to your graphics cards. Now, I'm obviously running this inside a virtual machine, so it's not gonna show me any options regarding this, but you have basically three options when it comes to handling hybrid graphics on Magia. First of all, you have the traditional uh, Bumblebee method, which is uh, well used, it's, it's been around for ages, but it also does require a little bit of overhead. Um, the other option that you have is a custom built Magia uh, Prime tool, which is basically uh, a tool that um, effectively switches your graphics card from the Intel integrated GPU to the NVIDIA um, dedicated GPU. And it will, um, when it does that back and forth, it will actually make sure that it properly powers down the NVIDIA card because as it stands at the moment with a lot of drivers and a lot of different distros, you'll usually find that um, the NVIDIA card will actually still be left on even though it's not actually being used. So that's great. And then also the other option they give you is the free and open source option, which is to, um, which is to just use the Nouveau driver, which actually now um, they are saying has support for prime GPU offloading out of the box, which is cool. And, uh, and also it will fully power down the GPU when you switch to the Intel uh, chip, which again is, is commendable. The fact that you can properly turn off the GPU if you're not wanting to use it without installing, um, without installing uh, the third party drivers, that is good to see. Okay, so where else are we at? Um, one thing that I noticed when it came to package management. Now, there's, uh, there's a few different things that I wanna talk about when it comes to I guess the pros of Magia, and a lot of it is wrapped up in the Magia Control Center. You can, you've already seen me poking around a little bit in here. 
So a lot of this boils back to the, the Mandriva heritage. Um, Magia borrows a lot and, and it remains largely unchanged, um, at least at face value from how it functions at its core from the Mandriva tools that if you ever use Mandriva, you'll be pretty familiar with. So it's all, I think, based off Drake Conf or RPM Drake, or depending on where you are in the system settings, that's what it'll, you'll be presented with. But one thing that I did want to point out is that in the background, they've actually given you two options when it comes to package managers. There's the classic URI, uh, RPMI, I think it's called. And then there's also uh, a more up-to-date option that they um, introduced in the last release of Magia of uh, DNF, which is the same one that Fedora uses. Now, me being a bit more familiar with Fedora than I am with Magia, uh, that was a nice inclusion. I much prefer DNF as a package manager and um, it's just more performant, a bit more efficient. And so it's great to see that they're adopting something like that. Now on the front end, you've got the, uh, you've got RPM Drake, which like I said, has been around forever. Now this is both a good thing and a bad thing. When looking at the way that Man uh, Magia packages up things, um, some of these meta packages, for example, are really cool in that you can install um, different desktop environments and you can actually select ones with minimal dependencies. Basically, if you just want the bare desktop environment and you want as minimal amount of cruft and extra like double ups on, on uh, you know, file managers and calendars and all that kind of thing, you can select a minimal option, which is a nice uh, addition there. Um, but you'll also notice that in terms of like look and feel and user experience design, it's very early 2000s. And the same can be said for honestly, a lot of the tools that are here. The ones that you use to manage the system, the Magia Control Center, they're all, they all feel very um, early 2000s. And, uh, and some of them do have like a fresh coat of paint over the top since last I used them. And you'd kind of hope for that. Uh, and the tools are very robust but they just look dated and the way that they function is dated. Now, again, this all boils down to trade-offs because I'm gonna get into cons here in just a second. Um, but if you like the, the robust tools that are available to you all in one place here in the Magia Control Center, then you're probably going to like Magia as a distribution because the way it handles things, even things like network management, for example, you get greeted with this big old window here instead of like a, simple kind of pop-up thing that's all elegant and themed appropriately for KDE. It does its own custom network management and it sometimes looks a little funky. Um, I don't know, it is what it is. And I think if, if, you're, if you're into it, you're into it. And if you're not, you're not. The one knock that I will give for package management and I guess software that's available as a whole is that uh, when it comes to integrating with um, either Snap or Flatpak um, packages, at least to my knowledge, feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, uh, you can't integrate that into the, the GUI here of the package management. If you were to install Snap or Flatpak in the back end, which you can, uh, you'd be stuck using the terminal. So that is what it is, I guess. But the problem with that is that Magia's release cycle is very slow and steady. Um, they only release a new distribution every two years and I believe, again, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but from what I'm reading, I believe you only get 18 months of bug fixes and security updates and all that kind of thing per distribution. I'm guessing that's after it's been released. What I'm trying to get at is that it doesn't have a very aggressive release cycle, which means that the software that you're using is going to date pretty quickly. And depending on how quick the Magia team are at updating the software in the repositories, and I'm guessing probably not all that quick, uh, you could be left with some outdated software. Now, thankfully, because of Flatpak and Snap, we, uh, we do have some great options out there to combat that. But the fact that they can't really be integrated out of the box is a bit of an issue. All right, so I'm gonna finish up with the pros and then I'm gonna briefly touch on some cons here. Uh, so pros, performance is really admirable. Like seriously, across, um, across KDE, I'm gonna log out here and I'm gonna go to GNOME. Um, it performance seems really solid. I've only given it four gig of RAM and two CPU cores to play around with. And it seems like it's, it's, uh, it's chugging along all right. Definitely Plasma is more performant than GNOME is on the whole, as we can expect. But for a distro that I'm criticizing on the front end for looking a little bit long in the tooth, it is relatively sprightly. Um, and also the other nice thing is that you can actually upgrade now from Magia 6 to Magia 7 using the package manager, which is great for a release that only gets put out every two years. Okay, let's get into some cons. 
So, uh, first of all, the, the look and feel of a lot of the Magia stuff is, uh, is very dated. Even the welcome screen that you're presented with at the start just kind of looks a little bit, yeah, just a little bit old. Um, and again, it's not really a knock. It's more of a subjective thing more than anything. It's not my speed. Um, but the Magia team have uh, obviously put their time and effort into a lot of the back end stuff as opposed to what greets the user. And again, it boils back to a theme here where I feel like Magia is a perfect distribution if your Linux happy place is anything Mandriva based. If all you wanted was Mandriva to make a comeback, then you probably are already running Magia. If you ran Mandriva back in the day and you loved it, then go and check out Magia because chances are you'll feel right at home. You'll get all the nostalgic feels um, with some really solid and up-to-date back-end stuff going on here. All right, uh, now, the other thing that I wanted to mention as a con was uh, font rendering. Again, one of those things, just font rendering was really bad on KDE. It's not too bad on GNOME, but it's still, it's still a bit give or take. And an obvious criticism of a distribution like this would be the fact that it doesn't seem like much changes from release to release. Um, I, the same tools that were there 10 years ago are still here and uh, they largely haven't changed. And for me personally, I guess another criticism that I would have is just that the, the flow of like doing stuff is quite clunky because of the fact that a lot of these tools uh, were created in a paradigm where user experience was quite different. So if you wanna count how many clicks it takes to install software, you can either just search up install and remove software and it'll dump you straight into, um, it'll dump you straight into the software management uh, tool. Um, as you can see, it kind of takes a little while to load up the repositories. It, it kind of reminds me a little bit of, of OpenSUSE, but not quite. Um, and then if you want to change other things, you have to load up separate sections of the control center. It's not uh, terribly centralized or integrated. So for example, browsing and configuring the hardware, if you notice at the beginning of the video, I actually had to install some extra packages just to get this section to work. So it kind of breaks you out of the, uh, breaks you out of the window for every single thing that you want to do which again, it's just an older way of doing things. And if you dig it, you dig it. If you don't, you don't. Okay, so as quickly as possible, that's basically what Magia 7 has to offer. And, um, and chances are you've probably already considered running this distribution if you really enjoyed what Mandriva had to offer back in its heyday. And, uh, and without trying to belittle the work that Magia is doing, because I think it's always important that we have um, different options for major bases of um, of Linux distributions, Magia isn't based off anything. It's its own project. It's run by the community. It keeps chugging away and providing a stable base for anyone who wants to run Linux stuff. I think that's awesome. They've got a very good, uh, a fair representation of open source software and games available in their repositories. They have a really good virtualization stack. They're slowly working on ARM support and they've got a very robust, but kind of outdated tool set. So for the right person, this could be a good distribution. But for me personally, I'm going to give it a miss. But we will be back again looking at PC Linux OS, another distribution that takes its heritage from the Mandriva side of things, but has a very different, uh, very different approach to, uh, to what a Mandriva based distribution could look like and function. So stick around for that in the very near future. Definitely give the video a thumbs up if it helped you out. We'll teach YouTube's algorithm a lesson or two and subscribe if you wanna see this stuff on a regular basis. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.